In this video, we will discuss a few non-topic related questions involved with our challenge to Jeffrey Love in the United States Geological Survey. From your emails and comments, and from those I'm getting from those of you who actually work for government agencies like the USGS and NASA, you are not having any trouble at all seeing the connections. It's just about whether or not they are willing to even look. If you haven't seen our challenge, we have an easy version and an intermediate version. Both video links are right below here for you to click. Let's get right to these couple questions, however, because there are some that go a bit outside the subject matter. First, why would one of the world's most respected scientists respond to such a childish and immature challenge? While a bit of levity does not a child make, I do see the point against my using some humor in an academic challenge. And as for a response, I really don't expect him to. The challenge was indeed meant to say that ignoring new ideas was a relic of the past, but otherwise, this is not some internet crank making wild claims. This thing was observed, modeled by statistics professors, and now in the future, things seem right on point. Call me the blind squirrel, call me a smartass, call me Sally if you like, but my goal was merely to make sure that he and the USGS couldn't say they didn't know this thing exists. What I really was doing was asking for help from someone qualified to study these topics, and I poked a little fun with some comedic humor in there as well. From the emails I'm getting from USGS employees and other organizations, you guys already know this stuff and it is being quietly whispered about in the hallways. Consider that my perfect scenario is a modified version of Sagan versus Velikovsky, except where Velikovsky said the mainstream was all wrong and that he had all the answers, I'm saying that what Love has looked at thus far is correct, but that there is something else he should look at that appears to show a great deal of promise, and that while I don't have all the answers, I am ravenous in their pursuit, and I do not expect Jeffrey Love to claim any other mode of action. Well, like I said, absolutely nothing. It's my full expectation that this is going to be ignored and hope that we will just go away. Not sure that works with a quarter million people, but that's besides the point. In a perfect world, he would hear me out and try to push the science forward. Not every quake or solar magnetic field event hits the model perfectly, but not all your fingers or thumbs. This is not 100% simple in terms of analysis, but it is my contention that he could handle this far more easily than his previous work suggesting the sun did not cause earthquakes. How can this help save lives into the future? Well, future is the key word there. Right now, the data comes on a four-week delay and is averaged in 10-day blocks. Doesn't matter how many of these quakes hit within just a few days of those magnetic peaks. Without real-time data, you really cannot make any forecasts. However, we can look at coronal holes to see when the fields are tipped our way a bit extra, and hey, Maybe we'll convince Stanford to begin releasing that data in real time. Combine that with the technology to monitor the magnetic field, ionosphere factors, and GPS, and we can actually begin to predict earthquake location as well. The goal would be to get them all, but saving just one life might be considered worth the effort. Is there anything you can do? Sure, there is plenty you can do, and a few things that you should do. I have Jeffrey Love's phone number and email, along with many others in that organization, and it would be easy to tell you all to bombard that email and phone number until they break, but trust me, from what I hear, there is no lack of awareness about this topic and our challenge. They're very well aware of it. But the government will only ever respond to the masses, so while bombarding emails isn't our style, some form of mass movement must be employed. You got Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter? Do you think your friends can see the lines on those charts as easily as you could? Share it. Share it like wild. But share the facts, not a sensationalized version of them. My name is Ben Davidson with Space Weather News, and my challenge extends to you as well. Let's see if we can all change the future.